The next time you're in the mood for some delicious garlic knots, make them in your air fryer. You can go from dough to knot in under 30 minutes. Welcome to the Salted Pepper, where we cook for real life using real food and we keep it real simple. Today I'm gonna to show you how to make a delicious recipe for air fryer garlic knots. First thing I need to do is make the dough. Now if you don't wanna make the dough, you can absolutely purchase store-bought um, pizza dough. That'll work perfectly fine. But I happen to like this recipe and I love making bread and dough, so I'm gonna make it homemade. All right, first thing I do is sort of aerate the flour. This is all-purpose flour, and I just like to, you know, move it around in the bowl or the container that you store your flour in and get it aerated, and then we're going to level out. This is a one-cup level. Now, every baker will tell you that it is best to measure your ingredients by weight. However, a lot of people don't have a scale, and... I didn't have a scale for a really long time, and so I don't I don't weigh it out. I just measure it out, and I go by looks of the dough, okay, more than anything else. So I start off with two cups of flour, but I always have some here in case I need it. And then we're going to add in a half of a tablespoon of sugar. That feeds the yeast. So it doesn't make the dough sweet or anything like that, but it does give the yeast some food in order to proof and make the dough rise. This is one and a half teaspoons of instant yeast, meaning I don't have to proof it first, okay? So I can just add it directly into the flour and it'll be perfectly fine. If you have a different type of yeast that requires proofing, then you would do that in a bowl for about five minutes, add some water and your sugar, give it a little stir and let it bloom, okay, for about five minutes. All right, let's go ahead and start getting this mixed up. I like to mix the yeast in with the flour before I add the salt because sometimes salt can inhibit the yeast from um, activating and of course it, uh, it puts off gases and that's what makes our dough rise. So I like to add it after the fact. Then we have one tablespoon of olive oil. And now we're gonna start to add in the liquid, okay? So I start off, I have three quarters of a cup of warm water here. It's about 105 degrees. You don't want it any hotter than about 110 degrees. And this is going to help activate the yeast as well. So I'm just going to pour in about a quarter cup at a time. Turn the mixer off and scrape down the sides to get everything back into the middle here. And then we're going to add another quarter cup of the warm water. Again, scrape down the sides. Now, if you don't have a KitchenAid, you can do this in a bowl with like a wooden spoon uh, or something to just kind of mix all the ingredients together. You only need to knead this dough for a few minutes. So really, it's easy to do by hand. But since I have a KitchenAid, it makes it even faster. And I'm gonna add about a tablespoon at a time now. All right, give the sides a scrape down, put everything back into the middle. And it's still a dry dough, uh, but I'm gonna hold off on this last couple tablespoons until I need it for about a minute. Okay, so let me show you what it looks like right now. So the dough is starting to come together, but it is very dry and you can see at the bottom here, there are a lot of like loose pieces of flour that have not incorporated into a nice ball of dough. So we do need a little bit more water, but when it gets to this point, I added in very, very tiny amounts because we want the perfect consistency for our, for our dough. So maybe a teaspoon, teaspoon and a half. All right, so now let's take a look at it. It has completely brought all the dry flour into a ball here, 
and it's not very sticky, a little bit, but not too much. That looks just about perfect. Now, I'm gonna knead this for two minutes on medium speed, and then we're ready to get it to proof or rise for the first time. Okay, that looks great. So what I have here is two tablespoons of the uh, warm water leftover that I did not need to use. But guess what? I made this recipe earlier this morning and I needed to use the whole three quarters of a cup. So please go by, go by looks, not so much amounts, unless you want to measure everything out. Now we have a nice soft dough that is not too sticky. It's a drier dough than some bread doughs, okay? That's the one of the main differences between a pizza dough and a bread dough is you use a little bit lower of a hydration level, meaning flour to the liquid. So anyway, this looks really good. Now we're gonna get it into the Ninja Foodi to proof, okay? You could do this on the countertop as well. All you need to do is put it into a lightly oiled bowl put some saran wrap on top and leave it on your counter for about an hour or so or until it doubles in size. But I'm gonna use the proof function on the Ninja Foodi for this. Okay, I put about a teaspoon or so of olive oil in the bottom and then gently lift out the dough. And I like to kind of rub it around in there and then turn it over. And now we're gonna set the proof function. Now the proof function is only on the one lid models, but you can proof bread in the older Ninja Foodi models using dehydrate if you have that function. You just wanna set it at the lowest setting and you need to cover your bread with a wet towel because of the fan will circulate and kind of form a crust on your dough and you don't want that. But the Ninja Foodi one lid model, which is the OL series, does not do that. You can also proof in the new Ninja Speedy if you have that. And if not, just use your countertop, it's perfectly fine. All right, we're gonna uh, turn the Ninja Foodi on and we're gonna go down to the proof and we're gonna go up to 95 degrees and hit start. 30 minutes is plenty of time when you have a heated environment, a warm environment. So if you wanted to do this in your oven, you could turn your oven on to the lowest setting, like 250, let it preheat for about five minutes maybe, then put your bread in there and of course turn the oven off, okay? Because you don't want that high of a temperature and that will provide the warm environment for you to proof the bread. You can also do it, some people do it with the oven light on only, that will work. And like I said, you could just do it on your countertop, just put it in a bowl, cover with saran wrap and let it sit until it doubles in size, which usually takes about an hour, hour and a half. Could be longer if your kitchen's really cold. All right, so the 30 minutes is up of the proofing time and our dough has increased in size just as we want it. And now I'm gonna lift it out here and just grab a little bit of flour and put it on my cutting board here and just, I don't want too much, just a little bit. And then put it down here. Now, if you are starting off with store-bought pizza dough, what you wanna do is bring your dough to room temperature. And once it's to room temperature, you can pick up the recipe right here. Now we're gonna fold in the first part of the garlic for these air fryer garlic knots. And that is two bulbs of roasted garlic. And oh my gosh, it's so amazing. Now, you can do this a couple of different ways. You can make a paste. You could just leave them whole like I do. You can even put your dough back in your KitchenAid uh, if you have one and just mix it around with the dough hook for a little bit. I've done that and it works fine. What I'm gonna do here is just sort of fold the dough over a couple of times here. No specific way, it doesn't make any difference. Just incorporate and sort of mash it around, okay? One falls out, stick it back in. All right. Beautiful. One more fold and that looks good. Okay, there we go. Now we have our dough. Now what we wanna do is divide it into 16 one ounce little balls. And this is one pound of dough. So what I do, make it real easy, 
just split it in half. Okay, put a little bit of flour there so it doesn't stick. Then take this half, split that in half. Split that in half. <laughs> See how easy this is? <laughs> split that in half. There we go. So no measuring, no weighing, nothing like that. We don't want to make it complicated. Make 16 as even as possible little dough balls. Okay, there we go. Now I'm going to get a little bit more flour here. Put that there. You can do these a couple of different ways, but what I do usually is just put a little bit of flour onto a flat surface, whether it's a cutting board, your clean countertop, or you know a mat of some sort. It doesn't really matter. Then I just sort of lightly coat them. Not too much, but lightly. That will just help them from sticking to your hands. And then what you want to do is roll them out you could do it either way. You could do it like this. Or you could do it like this. Whatever you're more comfortable with, okay? When they are about six to eight inches long, you're going to tie your knot. Do not overthink this. Do not worry about it. They turn out perfect, okay? I promise. All right, I'm going to do that for all of these dough balls, and then we're going to get them dipped in this secret butter garlic sauce. And I'm going to share the recipe with you. All right, that's it. So that's all there is to making your air fryer knots or your um, garlic knots. They're not really air fryer knots, they're garlic knots because we haven't even air fried them yet, but we're gonna get to that in just a minute. Okay, so now this is part of the secret, so don't skip this, okay? This is what's gonna make them absolutely delicious. You need four tablespoons of melted butter, but make sure it's not too hot. It can't be above 110 degrees, okay? So make sure that once you melt it, you let it sit for a little bit. And then we add the secret blend of seasonings, which are super simple. Half of a teaspoon of fine grind sea salt, or you could use kosher salt. If you're gonna use table salt, use about a quarter teaspoon. I have one teaspoon of garlic powder and one teaspoon of Italian seasoning. Now, if you don't like Italian seasoning, you can absolutely omit it, or you can change it out for parsley. But we're gonna add some parsley on after we air fry. So I like to use Italian seasoning for this step and parsley as one of the garnishes. All right, now mix this up really well. You are gonna be blown away at how good these are. And then just dip them. Get them nicely coated and put them back on your parchment. The warmth from the melted butter, and of course all these seasonings, but the warmth of the melted butter is gonna help kind of do the second rise fairly quickly. So what I usually do is I get them dipped and then I set them aside and I preheat my air fryer for 10 minutes. And by that time, we are ready to air fry. So it's not a long second proof. You just want them to proof maybe 10, 15 minutes at most. Now, if for some reason you were gonna skip this step, you would want to cover them with a damp towel because they won't have the added um, fat on top to prevent them from getting a hard crust once they start to um, proof. But don't skip this part. This is the best part. This is what gives them an amazing flavor and texture. Oh my gosh. I get to smell this garlic. Oh gosh, it's so wonderful. All right, I'm gonna run and wash my hands, preheat the air fryer on broil, which is the hottest setting for the Ninja Foodie. You wanna preheat for a full 10 minutes. Just go to whatever your hottest setting is. On this one, it's gonna be broil, which is also known as grill on the European models. We just have a little over five minutes until our air fryer has completely preheated for that full 10 minutes. But I wanted to share this with you because, you know, if you're at home saying, well, that looks good, but that's, I'm never gonna eat all those uh, garlic knots. Well, number one, until you try them, you don't know because they really are that delicious. 
But what I like to do is make up a batch or even two, because you could easily double all the ingredients and make a double batch for 32 of them. Then what I do, once they're covered in the butter and the seasonings, put them on a parchment lined tray and pop them in the freezer. Now they are not going to rise up anymore in the freezer, so you can put them fairly close together. I'm going to go ahead and freeze all of these except for what I'm going to make here today. So I'm going to leave six out and freeze the rest. There we go. And then put them in the freezer for about four hours or so. And then what you have are these frozen, okay, already done garlic knots that you can put into a freezer bag. And then whenever you want a homemade air fryer garlic knot, all you have to do is take out the number that you need, let them sit out and come to room temperature. Once they're completely thawed, then you can go ahead and air fry them. Okay, so once we're fully preheated, you do not need to spritz the basket or the tray um, because we already have the butter on here. So just set your garlic knots into your air fryer. And I do preheat the cooking surface. So right now I'm using the basket to cook these on. So I had the basket in during the preheat. If you're using a tray or some other type of air fryer, you want to uh, have the whatever surface you're cooking on in. All right, so let's try to keep these a little bit apart because they will puff up as they cook. Looks like six fits in there really nicely. And now we air fry them. So we want to select the air fry function. We want to take the temperature to 375 and the time to 10 minutes. Now usually they take somewhere between seven and 10 minutes, okay? It'll depend on your air fryer. This one's been running about seven, eight minutes on average. But I don't go by time, I go by look, and I'm gonna show you exactly what to look for so that you remove them when they are perfectly cooked, golden brown, and absolutely delicious. All right, so it's been five minutes. It's telling me to shake. We don't really need to do that with the garlic knots, but it is a good time to go ahead and check on them. All right, so they're looking really good. Now what you wanna do is brush with a little bit of melted butter. This is two tablespoons of butter, and I'm only gonna use a little bit on top here because we wanna save a little bit for after they're cooked as well. This is going to help them brown up, turn nice and golden, and of course, taste delicious, right? All right. Oh my gosh. Looks so good. All right. So we're going to go another two to three minutes, okay? And I'll check it in two and let you know what they look like so that you can determine when your garlic knots are done. All right. Let's take another peek. Oh, they're perfect now. It's been eight and a half minutes. They look amazing. Now for the final touch. You wanna mix up the butter, put a little bit on there, and then immediately sprinkle with some parsley. Now you can do this while they're in the air fryer. You can take them out, doesn't really matter. I also go back over with my brush once I put the parsley on with my like butter brush, as I will call it right now, just because it makes the parsley look like it's baked in, but it stays nice and green and beautiful looking. This is just dried parsley. I don't recommend using fresh parsley. Um, although, you know, you could if you're using it after, after the cooking process like I just did, you could be fine if you wanted to roughly chop up some parsley fresh from your garden. All right, there we go. Our garlic knots are done. Look at how gorgeous they are. They are nice and golden brown and they taste amazing. And I know this because I made them about five times now. All right, there we go. I'm going to let them cool just for a minute. Grab some marinara for dipping 
and then we will get to tasting. All right, here we go. Ooh, they're still warm. All right, so break them apart here, just so you can see the inside. Oh my gosh, how amazing. Oh, these are perfect because they are crispy on the outside, but so soft and tender on the inside. Oh my gosh. Mm, mm, mm. Wow, wow, wow. Now, I love dipping them in marinara, but guess what? These are so good that you don't need anything. They are buttery, they are garlicky, they are perfect.